left of the uh, debug features that I just wanted to show you guys real quick. Uh, there's there's a couple more things, uh, but we'll be you know going over that stuff later. Uh, so let me quit out of this and go back to the slideshow. So I want to talk a little bit about memory, uh, just in case you guys aren't familiar with this. But um, you know, as as you probably know, uh, memory or anything really is stored in binary in computers. We are very used to a base 10 decimal system, which came about, I'm pretty sure, because we have 10 fingers and it's easy to count that way. But computers are made up of billions and billions of switches, which are just 0 and 1. And so numbers are represented uh, in binary on computers. Of course, when we look at this, binary can get very tedious, so we use hexadecimal, which is base 16. Binary is base 2. It's very convenient to use hex because 16 is a power of 2, so everything lines up nicely. Um, as you can see by this, um, every time you hit like a new power of 2, like 16 here, uh, binary moves one pl duh, place up, and hexadecimal also moves one place up and then going down to 256, which is very awkward in decimal, 256. You can see the binary representation is very neat, and also the hex representation is very neat, and the two are very correlating. So it's very convenient to use hex. And we don't just use binary because once you get to some very large, you know, larger values, binary gets very, very big very fast. Um, but hex stays relatively small. Um, you can see one byte of binary, which is 8 bits. Um, that that takes up uh, eight digits in binary, but with hex it's only two. And so the largest byte in binary is all ones, which equals 255. In hex, it's just FF. Um, and then as you get farther down, um, a half would be two bytes, and you can see it's already getting very large, and then a word is four bytes. And we're going to be working with words, actually, which are little chunks of memory that are four bytes large. Um, and so that would be 32 bits long in binary, which is very tedious. In hex, the largest word is just eight digits. Um, oh, and in case I need to explain this as well, um, hexadecimal is, since you have si uh, 16 digits before you move up one decimal place, um, after you hit nine, you use A, B, C, D, E, and F. So A is equal to 10, B is 11, C is 12, D is 13, E is 14, and F is 15. And then finally, when you hit 16, you carry over to 1, 0. Uh, so it's something you just get used to, and you really don't need to think about it too hard. Um, and for larger numbers, you can also just throw it in like a conversion like tool online or Windows calculator or whatever. So the first thing I want to show you guys as far as like hacking goes is editing memory. Um, I have a few memory addresses that I've already mapped out and I'm just going to mess with them so you guys can see what happens. So let's see. I'm going to load up Melee here. I have a save state prepared actually. That's one very convenient thing that Dolphin has. It has save states. So you can actually, like, you could use that for very, very rapid testing and messing around instead of, like, I don't know, it would be. Sometimes it's just very inefficient for a console to set the same thing up over and over again. Save states are very efficient for anyone who's used an emulator, you know this. Uh, but anyway, uh, let me bring up my notes here. Uh, there are a couple of um, memory addresses that I want to mess around with so you guys can just see how powerful memory editing is. Um, the very first memory address for the GameCube Wii is um, the number 8 and then 7 zeros. This is the first memory address um, right here. Um, and this is actually the game's ID. Like if I view as ASCII here, you can see that it's G A L E O one, which is uh, the four character ID for melee. If I would load up Brawl, it would say R S B E O one, etc. Um, so that's the very first memory address. And for GameCube, the very last memory address is eight one seven F F F F F, and that's the very last.
last memory address that exists for the GameCube. So that and everything in between, all kinds of game data is stored. Oh yeah, and um, Melee's audio gets messed up, and I'm using an old build of the emulator, and Melee's audio gets messed up, so it just faded out. The audio's still working, but anyway. Um, so I have a few memory addresses mapped out, and you're going to ask me how I found these memory addresses, uh, but we'll go over that later, and I'll, I'll show you a couple of things. Um, but let's go to 80C6BAB0. So you can see this memory address here is um, 40200000. Um, this is what's called a floating point variable, which is essentially a way of storing decimal numbers in hex. Um, I don't really know how to do the conversion in my head, but there are plenty of like floating point conversions, and Dolphin has one built in. You can see over here, this value is equal to 2.5, and what we're looking at is actually Link's jump velocity. So you can see I'm jumping around here, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to increase that to a little bit. I'll increase it to 4. So now when I jump, you can already see that I'm going much higher. So right there, the game is, every time I hit jump with Link, uh, the code for Melee, it refers to this memory address saying, well, what velocity should we set to Link's jump? Set it to whatever is in this address. And I can just mess with that, and uh, now I have Link jumping like twice as high. And I can I can increase this even more. I can like, I don't know, I can... There we go. So, what was this at? That was at 2.5. So I'll set it back. So, y you can already start to understand just how powerful simple memory edits can be. You can do, like, pretty much whatever you want with the game. Well, not whatever you want, but y it's a very, very capable thing. Um, so let me put in another memory address here. Let's go to... Uh, 80C6BACC. And this is, well, it's a very complicated thing in hex, but you can see the floating point conversion puts it at 0 0.11. And this is Link's gravity. So I can increase this, I can decrease it. Uh, let me increase it a little bit. So now it's at 0 0.44. And Link is very heavy now. Oh, it actually set back as soon as I died, but, um, so I can do that, or I can decrease it to, like, 0 0.027, and Link is very, very floaty. So, we're playing Brawl here. And then right nearby is another memory address, and this one isn't a floating point, this one is just two. Um, and this one is actually controls the number of jumps that Link has. So I can set this to one, and Link can only jump once now. I don't have a second jump. I mean, I can still have B, but I don't have a second jump. And if I set this to 3, or any value above 2, I actually, I'll be honest, I don't know how this is negotiated or, like, how the code looks at this, but if I set it to anything above 2, then I actually have infinite jumps with Link. I'm guessing that for multiple jump characters, there's also another memory address that ties to this uh, that I didn't bother finding. But in this case, I have infinite jumps now. So let me just set that back to two. And then the last thing that I want to show you guys is a little bit farther away. It's 80CB18D0. Um, 
and I want to show you this because we're we're going to write a code that modifies this. But also, I want to show you that you can you can look at changes to memory addresses live. Every time I click on this here, um, the memory refreshes, and this is actually player two's damage. So if I hit player two, he has five percent now. Refresh. You can see that this updated with a value of five. And every time I hit him and I refresh this, you can see his damage go up. And one fun fact, by the way, is that um, percent damage in melee isn't simply just a uh, like a two-digit number. It's actually stored as a big decimal right here. In this case, his percent isn't 24. It's 24.249998. So that's pretty interesting. And again, I can set this to whatever I want. So let's put in something like 512. So I just set his damage to 512, but the game isn't reflecting that. You can see that his damage still is 24% at the bottom of the screen. Um, so right now, I'm not sure if this worked, because there is no on-screen indicator that his damage changed. Um, and this will happen to you sometimes. Um, I mean, in reality, that graphic that displays his percent damage is only programmed to update when Dr. Mario takes damage. And so just because I changed the amount of damage he has, uh, his percent isn't going to update until the next time he takes damage. So we can find out if this works by hitting him with something. There we go. So this is a lot of fun to mess around with, this kind of stuff. Um, for sudden death and event matches where you start with a certain amount of percent, um, that's something else in the game's code that basically says if this is sudden death mode, then start with 300% damage. Um, I'd probably be able to make a code where you can, like, you could probably go in and, like, modify the line of code that sets the 300% damage and change it to something else. I don't have that planned in this lesson, but it definitely is possible. Oh, and the value is resetting on death. I just, um, you need to click to update. So, there, it's at zero. So that's the first thing I wanted to show you guys, just modify some memory addresses to show you like how powerful uh, these tools are that you have in your hands. You can do whatever you want, as long as you know where you're looking. And I haven't showed you how to find these memory addresses yet, but we are going to get around to that. So let's go to the next topic. So I want to talk a little bit about Action Replay, Gecko, Weird. Um, these are essentially the language that we use to write codes for the GameCube and the Wii, and other systems have their own sort of languages, but um, GameCube uses Action Replay, and the Wii uses what's called either Gecko or Weird, um, or Ocarina, actually, some people call it Ocarina codes. Um, but they're essentially, and here's an example of one, they're essentially strings of hex numbers that uh, tell the system to modify certain uh, values. Like, this one is one that I wrote for Melee. You can push D-pad left or right to toggle fixed camera. Um, the, the premise of this code is very simple. I can actually break it down line by line. Um, this first line says, if the value at this address equals 2, which means if you pushed uh, left on the d-pad, then set this memory address value to 4, which changes it to fixed camera. Um, and then this says if the value at this address equals 1, which is right on the d-pad, then set this memory value to 0, which is not fixed camera. So it 
it, it'll make a little bit more sense once we actually go over it, um, specifically the first two digits here, the 08 and the 04. Um, I'm going to talk about that a little bit. Um, when you write a code, 